Hello guys, so today I'm going to talk about integrals. I'm going to begin with the substitution rule. We will learn to substitute a new variable and place an existing expression or function to make the integration even more easier. As I said it in the last video, due to the fundamental theorem of capital loss, FTC, it of course it is important to be able to find antiderivatives, which are integrals. Uh, but however, our anti-differentiation formulas doesn't tell us how to evaluate integrals, integrals such as this. If you are really loving to derivatives, you can set its product rule, but on integrals we have some other rules, with the u substitution, etc. Then I'm going to discover in the next chapters. Of course, to find this integral, we use a problem solving strategy to introduce something extra, which is a new variable. We change the variable x to a new variable u. As you can see here, the u can be found at x here. Uh, suppose we build like u to be the one the other the other sign in the equation, the first equation, which is u is equal to 1 plus x squared. And we find the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then the differential of u is du, so 2x dx. Well, if you notice that the dx is not a notation for an integral where to be interpreted as a differential, then differential 2x dx would occur only in the first equation. So, formally, without justifying a calculation, we could possibly write it. Like this, 2x square root of 1 plus x squared dx is equal to integral of uh, square root of 1 plus x squared d 2x dx. This is an ugly function to be honest, but with the use substitution we can make it even more better. For example, a square root of u, which is only 1 plus x squared d u, which is the integral of that of u. No derivative of the u, but then we take the, the integral of it in the end. So let's take it to the front, the integrals, 2 over 3 u, 3 over 2, plus 0. So let's make it as it was before without u, which is u is equal to x squared, 1 plus x squared, 2 over 3, and x squared plus 1, and the power of 3 over 2 plus 0. But however, now we can check that we have the correct answer by using the chain rule to differentiate the final function of the second equation. In this case, we have 2 over 3, x squared plus 1, and the power of 3 over 2 plus c. We see 2 over 3, that multiplies 3 over 2, because the chain rule will be big to the, we take to the front 3 over 2, and here then multiply it. As you know, 2, 2, and 3, and 3, 6, the 6 and the 9 over 6 there. Let's take calculations. It will multiply by x squared plus 1, 1 over 2. We don't have to do anything here. This is the chain rule, and, but we just multiply it. The 2x, which is inside of here. And don't forget negative here. And this will become 1 over 2. And, uh, the whole the only result is just 2x squared of x squared plus 1. But in general, this method works whenever we have an integral that we can write in the form. Uh, let's check this one. An integral f of g of x and uh, g prime of x dx. But let's observe that if f primitive, uh, some books that are called primitive of f of function, is the same problem is equal to f to the function. Then the integral of f prime of primitive g of x and g prime of x dx is equal to f g of x plus c. Because the chain rule, as you can see here, f g of x and uh, is equal to f prime g of x and g prime of x because we take the derivative of this side g of x. But if you make the change of variable or substitution, you assume g of x from the third equation. We only have uh, f prime and g of x, g prime of x. 
the x. So let's expand it and distribute it something else. F G F X. Yes, perfect. Let's see. But some of the professors don't like it like this way. And that's why you go with further with the F U plus C. You take the G F X and the U in the distribution and take the derivative of G X. So let's go further with it and the F prime of U D U. Write in F prime the capital F. So to f, we get integral of f g of x g prime of x dx equal to integral of f u du. Thus, we have proved the following rule. If uh, u is g of x, a differentiable function whose range is integral i and f is a continuous on i, then we can clearly set the integral of f g of x and the g prime of x dx is equal to the same as integral of f u du. But if you notice the substitution rule for integration was proper using the chain rule for differentiation, we would highly notice that uh, if u is equal to g of x and du is the same as g prime of x dx. So we to remember the substitution rule is a thing of dx and du in the fourth equation as differentials. Thus, the substitution rule says it is permissible to operate with dx and du after integral signs as if they were differentials. So let's take the first example of the substitution rule. Find x uh, cubed cosine of x to the 4 plus 1. As you can see, we can check the use of the solution here with the x to the 4 because x to the 4 gives us 4x cubed and we can simplify the x to the 3rd here. So let's make substitution new blah blah blah. This happens because the differential is du and become 4x to the 3rd, and which apart from the constant factor 4, it occurs only in the integral. Thus, using x to the third dx and uh, is equal to same the as the same as d u over d u over four, and the substitution rule we have. So let's check it now in some any uh, uh, this illustrative way. X to the third cosine x to the four plus two dx is equal to, is equal to integral of cosine of u times one over four d u is equal to one over four integral of sine of u times d u. And Let's check it, 1 over 4, sin u plus c, because we're saying the use of distribution here. And of course, 1 over 4, sine of x, 4 plus 2, because it doesn't change. It's u, but uh, we just rearrange it, there is a 4 to make it even cooler. After simplifying it, we've come to the conclusion to, to 1 over 4, sine of x to the 4 plus 2 plus c. Don't forget to mess because this is the um, the angle. Don't forget this one, okay? We've noticed that the final stage we had to return the original variable x. Yeah, no shit. The idea behind the substitution rule is to replace a relatively uh, complicated integral by a simpler integral. Of course, that's the main reason of it, sir. But this is only accomplished by changing from the original variable x to a new variable u. That of course it is a function of x. Thus, in the first example, we have replaced the integral of x to the third cosine x to the fourth plus two dx by the simple integral one of over four uh, integral cosine u du. And the main challenge on using the rule is to think is an appropriate substitution. Of course, you we should try to choose u to be some function of the integrand. It was differential of self cures. Except for a case of factor, this was the case in the first example. If that isn't possible, we have to, we have to try choosing u to be some complicated part of the integrated, uh, perhaps the inner function, and the composite function. So, and to find the raw substitution is a bit of an art. Yeah, really. Uh, it's not unusual to get wrong. If you forget that's a work, try not substitution and remove all your work that you've done. So let's evaluate 2x plus 1 dx. Uh, in this case, I would highly suggest you put the square root as a u, not 2x, because that doesn't give you anything. Because uh, if, you d if you do put uh, 2x plus 1, it gives 2 as derivative. Uh, and we simplify the square root is which is all in power 1 over 2 and simplify it really really easy just remove the square root uh, so let be let u be 2x plus 1 then du is 2x so dx will du over 2 
Thus, the rule gives the uh, integral of square root of 2x plus 1 dx is equal to the integral of square root of, square root of u d u over 2. So now we have to simplify uh, square root. Uh, 1 over 2, yes, u over 1 over 2 d u. Mm, don't forget, we have to take an plus 1 there, let's cast the integral. And we cast 3 over 2, yes, 1 over 2. So that multiplies 1, the power of 3 over 2, all over 3 over 2, because it is the integral rule. If you don't remember this one, you can go back to my video that I posted uh, some uh, minutes ago. Let's see. Then uh, let's go for the bit, 1 over 3, u 3 over 2, plus c. So let's substitute the back variable, 2 plus 1. So 1 over 3, 2 plus 1, 3 over 2, plus c. And another possible solution is u becomes uh, 2 x plus 1, square root. Then du is equal to dx over 2 uh, over square root of 2 plus 1. So dx just comes uh, uh, square root of 2 plus 1. But I, no problem, you can use whatever you, method you like, but if you like to show me the work and like you've learned this, you said it, you should get to the first one because the solution, second solution is just for cool people. No problem. So we can observe that u to the power sin is 2x plus 1. So to you, du is equal to dx. Thus, the square root of 2 plus 1 is equal to uh, dx is equal to the integral of u times to du. Then we can compute square du to the third over 3 plus c. <laughs> so let's take back where it was. 1 over 3, 2 plus 1, the power 3 over 2 plus c. So let's take another example. How many examples do we have? Oh my god, we are 27 and we have over 64, so no problem. I'll try to finish as soon as possible. Okay, let's check this one. X over square root of 1 minus x y square. U is equal to 1 minus y square become uh, 8x, negative 8x. Of course, the answer to exam could be checked by differentiation. So instead of instead of checking the graph, we use compute the graph with both integrands and f x is x over one square square root of one minus four x square and it's equal to integral g of x equal to negative one over four. So that multiplies the square root of one minus four x square. So let's say the case c is equal to zero. This is the graph, as you can see, pretty uh, ugly, but cool thing, if you know, you know. Because, as you know, the constants are zero. The function g of x, this is equal to the integral of f of x dx, give us the cool way of it, and the f. If you notice the g of x, it decreases when f of x is negative. Yes, as you can see here, but it increases when f of x is positive. As you can see, uh, okay, and this minimum value is here when f of x is equal to zero. So it's increasable for the graph of the that g is an antiderivative of f. Uh, we have this exercise now. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the x, plus you. But if you would let the u is equal to 5x, then the u is equal to 5 dx. And dx is 1 over 5 du, therefore e to the 5 dx, dx is equal to 1 over 5, integral of e to the u, du, 1 over 5 e u plus c, 1 over 5 fx plus c, blah blah. Now so let's check it once again. That's correct, it doesn't change it, it's the same, just take the derivative of that and take it up front. 
Let's find this for a fifth example. 1 plus x square x to the fifth dx. An appropriate substitution becomes more obvious if the factor is 5 as x to the fourth and x. Okay. So let's take u as 1 plus x square, then du is equal to 2x. X. So an x dx becomes 2 du over 2. We have this uh, fifth example, but a problem. So let's check the cut integral of 10 dx dx, which is a. Uh, oh, why is this confused? For sine x, over cosine x dx integral of it? Of course, it's, so you should check the u cosine x as u substitution. And then because it will be uh, sub 5 with negative sine of x, it becomes negative now. And as you know, sine of x dx will be negative du. And now the solution is negative ln u plus c and the negative ln cosine f plus c. And since negative ln cosine x is equal to ln of x cosine x minus 1, and the this other one, the result of the example can also be written as 10 x dx. This is the ln uh, second, second x plus c. We evaluate the different integral as it's usually to method of parsable. One method is to with the indefinite integral. First, and then use the FTC. As you can see, the first and second example, we have this function. And another method, which is usually preferable, is to change the limits of integration with the value is changed. We have a distribution rule for different integrals. If g prime is continuous on a b to b and f is continuous in the range of u which ends to the chief effects, then we can send the integral to equals a to b and the uh, f g of x and the, this is the chain rule and g prime affects the x. But let's take an f as an, an, an the derivative of f and the equation through the equation f g of x and the derivative of g of x g prime of x. As you can see, the second part of the fundamental theorem uh, calf calculus, we have this integral f g of x g prime of x dx equal to f g of x with the limit to b to a is that we come f g of b minus f g of a. But however, applying to the fundamental theorem of calculus, so part two is the second time, we also give us um, this function f g of b minus f g of a. Also, see the seventh example. Okay. We have observed the SRX equation, the other two variables. Uh -huh, okay. As a function of f x into a line of x over x, and it's going to be one of them. Okay, the next year is the substitution. Okay. So we're gonna stop here for now because uh, this is some valuable information that you don't want, you haven't heard about this one yet. So I really hope today was really easy for you and uh, please let me know down below the comments if you have any questions.